Right, Packaging Group Smurfit Kappa has reported EBITDA of 2.35 billion euros for 2022. That is a 38% increase. This even as box volumes fell in Europe with Germany and the UK missing the company's expectations. Smurfit Kappa says signs of a slowdown were especially prominent towards the end of the year with customers reducing stock even as inflation pressures ease. Well, I've already warned Tony Smurfit, CEO of Smurfit Kappa, that Jeff's been reading the trade mag. So just oh. honestly, I mean, talk about going into the weeds, Tony. Mm. Uh, Karen and I do our research. We like to think so. But you literally started the show this week so talking about cardboard box publications in yes, the United States. Yes, sir. So we'll come to you in a moment. So just a very easy one for me. How's things? Things are excellent. Uh, I think we showed we had a great year. We, we had... Uh, uh, revenue growth at 27%, EBITDA growth 38%, uh, 1.3 times levered, the lowest in our history. Uh, so overall, the company is in the best shape we've ever been. We have a 21% return on a, uh, capital employed. So incredible, incredible year and a good start to the year from the point of view of how we've seen the results. What, um, what does a slowdown look like? I mean, we've, we talked about it in the introduction. Mm. I mean, is this something that's going to snowball or actually do you not see signs of a... a a recession which the likes of you and Mullamesk, who are obviously very much involved in the transportation, shipping and packaging of goods, would spot first? I personally think, Steve, we're over the worst of it. Uh, I think we've seen January being OK. Uh, the, if you look at what's happened, say, for example, in Germany, which is probably our weakest market, we've seen uh, demand really slow in the last quarter. And that's really a psychological thing for the Germans, that they're not spending because of the worries about energy, the worries about inflation. Uh, I think inflation has probably peaked here, with the exception of how the war in Ukraine is going to influence things. Um, and I think that, in a sense, there's been a stimulus given to people in Germany. All the wage increases in Germany are being, you know, you get two for one, so there's no tax on a lot of the wages in Germany, the wage increases that are there to combat inflation. So you've got a really pent-up demand, I think, huge savings in Germany. Uh, and I think that will ultimately drive things. Obviously, the, the one caveat is what's going to happen with the war in Ukraine. Yeah. Um, look, Steve's teased it up, so I better go there and just talk about it. So, <laughs> so what caught my eye? What, what caught my eye was um, the headline: cardboard box demand plunging at rates unseen since the Great Recession. It was a, a, this might be a box bloodbath. Uh, wrote uh, Rachel Premack um, on January the 30th, and this this piece. Um, came from data collected in the fourth quarter by the American Forest and Paper Association and the Fiber Box Association on Friday. To me, it read like a continuing adjustment of consumer demand and habits after COVID, effectively. But I just wonder to what extent it may also reflect the fact that finally the consumer is beginning to run out of savings and are being impacted by the higher cost of capital now uh, and they are starting to uh, rein in their spending behavior here but it sounds to me like this doesn't reflect the picture that you're reporting this morning maybe this is a North American phenomenon I, I think there's 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 two things Jeff that have gone on in a sense because of the boom and the, the supply chain issues that were happening all, a lot of that has reversed uh, you know the boom in e-commerce for example you know was was unprecedented and I think that has reversed somewhat I think e-commerce is still an important part of the supply chain will continue to grow. But there is a reversal from the, the massive influx we had of orders based upon what happened in, in COVID. Uh, as well as that, in COVID, people were staying at home and they were consuming at home. And by its very nature, that's a lot more packaging. Individual packaging is, is, is a lot more, um, uh, there's a lot more of it than there is if there is bulk packaging. So those things have reversed, uh, and that th we're going through the process of that reversal, and that's why you're seeing really a big reversal in the United States. As well as that, y you know, you're seeing uh, there is a, a degree of, of inflationary pressures out there, especially we see that in our Latin American business where a lot of people are cutting back because of inflation. Inflation hits them directly uh, in, in those countries, not so much so in the Western countries that we, that we see here, in Western Europe, but in the Americas countries we see that, and probably there's a degree of that going on in the United States. 
So can we draw the links then to pricing declines? Because back in November, you were just questioning the pricing environment, whether there's room to hand back some of those gains and help out customers. As I look at your margin today, I can see that it's gone up uh, from 21 to 2022, 16.8% where you're at 18.4%. If we're talking about a pricing environment ahead where you're giving back some of those increases, what does that do to margin and what do those price decreases look like? Well, it's, it's, it's very difficult to predict because, you know, one of the things that we've been working on in the company is, is our investment plans. And a lot, a lot of those investment plans are there to improve our margins and improve our whole business mix. Uh, you know, we're very, we're very, very um, I suppose, focused on innovation. We're very focused on adding value to our, our products and making sure that our customer gets the best value. And so it's not necessarily true that our, innovation, uh, our margins will go down. I want to ask you about the ESG side because I mean I've seen your operations in person and I've seen that there is an investment in solar panels at one of the sites recently. Mm. We've had a lot of conversations about what type of investments companies should make at this point to try and help energy transition, whether they're just you know buying renewable product from the grid or whether they're actually creating energy product here. Just give us a sense of the decision that you made to invest in those solar panels and whether you see more of those types of investments, whether it helps offset, I guess, higher costs on the energy side. Yeah, we've been a little bit reticent on solar panels. I mean, we obviously have a lot of businesses in the south of Europe where there's a lot of sun. Uh, and so we, we have done a few little solar panel investments, but because we've always been worried about end of life for the solar panel, it seems like those panels are getting better for end of life uh, discussions so therefore we decided to kick on with a particular mill in in where we have land that we can put our, our own solar panels on ourselves so that particular i think solar panels are going to be a big part of the future for us and for for industry especially in the obviously the countries such as spain and italy tony thank you so much for stopping by nice to see you in person Great to see you. tony smurfett with us the ceo of smurfett kappa